In this video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process to set up a team operations portal all in Zapier. By the end, you should have a centralized hub for your team to operate your business with automation, zaps, tables, interfaces, all that stuff. For those of you who don't know me, I am Bryce Vernon. I'm a marketer and builder at Zapier. I've built out about 100 templates that you can see in the Zapier template library. So if you've seen some of my other videos, this one's gonna be a little bit different. Get out a pen, paper, lock in. We're gonna go through step-by-step step to get this set up for you. Six steps to make it happen. We'll start with step number one. There is a template, a team operations portal template. If you go to zapier.com slash templates slash team operations portal, you will see this thing that I have built for you. Describes it a bit here. You can see the canvas of the things it's made of. You can build this with a free plan across the board with Zapier, but there are pieces that require the pro plan or other paid plans. Don't worry about that right now. As those things come up, I'll make sure you know about them. For now, just go here and click use template. When you do that, it's gonna go ahead and create all this for you. You do need some space on your Zapier account. So like the free tables plan has five tables. This operations portal uses three. So if you don't have space for three, this won't work. So if that's the case, go find the Automation Pro bundle that Zapier sells because then you get workflows like Zap's Pro plan, you get Interfaces Pro plan and Tables Pro plan, and that's what you really need to actually use this thing. All right, so once you click the template, you can uh, see the home page here and see what all is built. So you got three basic pages. Of course, you can customize this, add a lot more. Three basic tables, and then there's a zap that will show up here right now. It's being built, and so it takes just a second, but that zap we'll go into more detail on in a bit. So just take a look around once you do this. There's a home page. We go here, we see some images, some text. We see a table here for projects. I mean, this could be anything, but it's a list of projects. And then there's quick links, you know, something like payroll, company directory, quote generator, what, whatever you want to put here for your team to operate your business. That's obviously what would go here. Okay, and here is the customers page. This is basically like a mini CRM that your team could use. And then there's also this form here where someone would be able to choose the customer from the list and click a button to send themselves a call prep. And there's a zap that's tied up to this that we'll get to. I'll show you how to build that out. The last one is a quotes page. And so this just shows you the sort of tools you could start building within this operations portal. So maybe you do have, you know, your team, they're generating quotes and to generate the quote, there's a zap and automation in the background that does that. So you just need a field or a form that your team fills out to generate the quote. And then you can see like a Kanban down below to manage sort of like a sales process. Okay, so from here, like all you're really gonna wanna do is change up the images and the texts, right? This is just a default image. You would wanna go ahead, you can create this yourself, upload whatever other image you want or throw in a URL and that'll change that up for you. And then the text, I mean, you're just, you know, put in here whatever text you want. A lot of businesses are putting in like just like announcements for their team. So I'm not going to go to each page. I mean, it's pretty simple to adjust the images, the media, and the, the text. The third thing that you're going to want to do, and this does require that pro plan, but you want to lock this down, right? We, this, this URL, anyone can go to and see this portal. Like if I sent you this URL, you'd you'd be able to see this. So before you start adding in like data, not that this is like searchable on Google or anything, it's just a smart idea to lock lock things down. So if you go over to the settings, access is, access and users is where you do that. And this is where you decide like how you want people or how you want it to be locked down. Like maybe there's just a password, but if you're gonna start having users, this is where the pro plan comes into play. And so, you know, you might want to choose advanced login. And here's where you actually manage who has access to your portal. Obviously, that's my, my email. So your email would show up here as the first user. You can just add them in here. You'd also, you can set up a zap to automatically add 
people if something else happens, right? Set up an automation for your team. But that's more or less it. They sign in with a magic link. So when they when they jump into the portal, like they fill out their email address and click a button. This would send an email with a magic link that they would click and that would log them in. Or you can have them log in with Google, right? With their own Gmail account. And so, yeah, we'll just save changes there. Once you do that and you go to the URL, now you've got this like locked and you need to sign in to, to view it. All right, so that's step three. Step four, you wanna change some your theme and, and some settings here, some basic stuff, right? But the settings, you give it a name, you can change what the public name is too, if you want. Like your, I don't know, you want to call it your your team, like Acme, Acme's dashboard or whatever. And then the subdomain you can change here to be whatever you want. There is a way to add a custom domain, but that that's on the advanced plan for a bit more money. So if you want to do that, you can. But we'll get there in a bit. More or less, you just update these settings, and then oh. Let's see, there we go. And then you'll change up the theme. There's this new sort of themes panel it makes it way easier to change the theme. Obviously for ours right here, like black actually looks pretty good. Border roundness, let's do smooth. Okay, changes the buttons a little bit. And then you can go in and you can drill in and really get specific about kind of what, what you want it to look like, but you know, that's kind of hard to see. I'm not I'm not a designer, so hey, I'll just keep it there. There's other settings here like throwing in your logo, favicon, the built-on Zapier label, you have to have that unless you're on you're on that advanced plan. So we'll leave it on for now. Custom domain again, advanced plan. You can actually add analytics tracking here and a navigation bar. So this is you definitely do want to do this. Um sure if I have a logo it would be there. You type in all the pages and this will give you that nav bar that makes it feel like its own, own sort of portal. Once I click save changes, then that nav bar pops up, see? Beautiful. Okay, only two more steps to make this thing run, but they're a little bit more involved. So step five, we're gonna look at the zaps and the tables behind uh, this dashboard. So to get there, like you can go to linked assets and you can see on this page what's available. So we can see there's the project table. You can get there that way. Or if you click into this, uh, this table, you go to data and then you're gonna see that as well. You can also apply filters and all that, but we'll just go look at this table. It's super basic. It's gonna hold all the projects that your team's working on. I mean, it could, this doesn't have to be projects, obviously, it could be anything. And from here, this is where you could start adding buttons or start adding some automation for, for your team. Like maybe, you know, maybe they start a, a new project. Every time there's a new project, like an automation runs to create like a more detailed project brief and like, adds it to some other system, sends a note in Slack, I mean, you know, the, the sky's the limit with how you want to automate records as they come in here or get changed, right? But the structure, the bones for this portal shows up in this table. There's also two other tables. One is for customers and one is for quotes to hold all the quotes. Honestly, the tables are super straightforward. You're having a, a customers, you get to decide what you want to put in there. The zap, however, is a little more complex. So let's take a look at that. So the idea is they're gonna select a customer from the dropdown, click send me call prep. So to look at the zap, we're gonna go into the form and click actions and you're gonna see the zap here. The other thing you could do is just look at linked assets. It's gonna show you all the other products and assets that support this portal. And you'll see the zap here. So we'll, we'll go there from here. When we get here, the template itself gives you most of what you need and it actually does a lot of the mapping. You're gonna have the prompt for this AI step. So it's a, a time saver to go ahead and use the template. We'll walk through each step here. The first one is testing the trigger. So this Zab is actually triggering when the form is submitted. So let's make sure this name looks correct, form submitted. So there we go. Okay, so the form is submitted in Zapier interfaces. We will continue and what we're doing is we're gonna go find 
the record for the customer that's selected in that dropdown. Remember, it is a dropdown here that they're selecting something from. And when you look at it, the dropdown field is using a table as its source. So it's using the customer's table and looking at company names so that when we look at it and drop down, we'll have all the company names to select. So we're going to have to go find that company in that sort of mini CRM, the, the customer's table that you have. Everything should be set up here, including the values from the form. So you really are just, you're just moving through this. The third step in the zap, you're gonna insert your own CRM here. I'm using Pipedrive. The template uses Pipedrive as just a placeholder, but obviously you wanna go use whatever you have as a CRM or shoot, if you're not using a CRM, then you just store everything in zap your tables. That's all you're gonna need. All right, skip the test. The fourth step, this is a new app by Zapier. It's basically, it's a wrapper. So it's like AI by Zapier. It's using OpenAI open AI in the background but you don't need an open AI key. So you, no authentication is needed. And it also has an amazing sort of prompt assistant is what it's called to step you through. It actually helps generate a prompt for you, which is amazing. Definitely check it out. What it has now though is something that I created in the template. It's gonna take all the data from previous steps and it's generating a call prep doc. It gives an example. So adjust this as you want. Obviously, you're going to map in fields from your CRM or wherever you're going to grab information for whoever's going to have this call with your customer. But this will spit out all that information. And what you're doing is you're taking it and you're putting it in a Google Doc. You could put this anywhere, right? Any doc, like a Coda doc, a Notion doc, or even skip it entirely and just send an email with information. But I have it here, has a document name, the time the form is submitted, the call prep for who, and then an email is sent. The email, when it's sent, is gonna be sent to the email address of your team member who's logged into that interface. That's captured, it's called user email address from the interface, so when they click the form submit, that's automatically captured. They don't have to like fill out their email address and that's thrown in here. So anyone on your team using this portal will click to get the call prep sent directly to them and no one else. And you're just throwing in the URL or you can throw in the details for it. So that's the zap. It's just an idea and obviously there is so much more you could do. The other zap you would want to think about building if you actually do want to have a quote generation process is to take the form fields from this quote and actually go and, and generate a legit quote and do a similar process, right? Where you're going to gather information, maybe use AI to help create the quote, format it correctly, whatever it looks like, make sure the person has, you know, on your team has it ready to send to a prospect. And when they do manage that, that's where, you know, they can have this Kanban below the quote generator tool to manage what's been sent, accepted, etc. Now, this leads to the final step of building this out. If you do want this quote Kanban view here to be specific to whoever's logging in. So you've got, you know, Ted on your team who's logging in and he wants to see only the quotes he's generated and he's working. So this is sort of his own little management Kanban. That's where you need the advanced interfaces plan to do this really special thing, which is called dynamic filtering. So what you do for any tables backed component like a Kanban is that you go into edit and you go into data and you're adding a filter. The filter is the team member email for whoever generated the quote. This is what's in your table. You need to have an email field for team member or whatever. It has to exactly be is current user, or it has to be is current user. So this is the user who is logged in to the interface. Whoever that is has to match up. And when it does, then it will show the quotes below. So that way, whoever logs in only sees their quotes, they're managing their own process. So you could do this for your tables or any other stuff. But again, that requires that advanced plan because this more or less opens up app like functionality where users only see what they need to see instead of having 
a team dashboard that you know everyone sees sort of everything. Okay, so that's a wrap. At this point, you should feel confident using the template, setting it up, exploring new ideas and how you can create more automated workflows, make this a central hub for your business. If you have any feedback, drop it below, give me a comment, let me know what else you wanna see, what questions you have. All right, we'll see you next time.